This like is gonna that. be sick. All right, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, that was crispy. Sample that. I'm gonna make oh. a rap, rap beat out of that. Mm -hmm. I'm making a snare drum out of that one. Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy. <laughs> so, it kind of does feel like we're uh, we're on like a speed dating setup right now. <laughs> yeah. Thirty questions, thirty seconds. Let's go. <laughs> Tommy, what do you got? Thirty seconds, thirty questions. I don't know, man. I, was, <laughs> I had my thing. I asked how long you guys have been dating. I oh, me and Danny. How long have we been <laughs> yeah. dating? Oh, we. Uh, I think we're going on. She's like sixteen years. We're gonna have our twentieth anniversary soon. Yeah. Wow. How long <laughs> you guys been dating? Ten. Ten ish. Yeah. Ten, ten years ish. ish yeah. yeah. We're running on ten ish. No bumps in the road either. Yeah, we like smooth sailing. Because we like dated before we made it official, but then we've been we've been official here for like ten. We signed a lot of paperwork and yeah, stuff, so it's, it's like a it's very smooth now. Yeah. Did we, did we, did we date before we got married? Did we flirt? What did we do? Well, you slept on my couch for like three years. There and you go. finally <laughs> I just like caved in and he gave you a room. He just couldn't help it. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing like someone on your he couch. Who's that party girl that you're yeah. like in love with that like won't commit to you? Mm -hmm. but you're just like, she's going to come around. She's going to come around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she has like nine other boyfriends. Like, she on, likes me the most. So sleeping she on sleeps your couch, here. Sleeping she on your couch, here. but dating other guys. Yeah. 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 Nah, she chooses to stay here. I love her. So uh, we have Breathe Carolina in here. I've actually been on your guys' podcast. Yep. Thanks. So it's like, I, I, I kind of like the podcast switching. You know, it's, I think it was maybe two years ago we did it. Yeah, probably. Two years ago? Yeah. yeah, I think so. But you guys were like official. We had the, we, 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 we didn't have this set up behind it us. It wasn't this official, but yeah. we were out there. You know, we we had there. the monster cans in there though. Yeah, oh yeah. Always was, had the monster cans. It was monster branded. Oh, yeah. for sure. It always is. Everything yeah. I do is monster branded. See, yeah. <laughs> that's what we like about you guys. I feel like in quarantine, Breathe Carolina, you guys have uh, put out more content than any other monster athlete musician combined. Well, I mean, this guy's a, a content genius, and we, uh, you know, we uh, monster shows us a lot of love. We got to show the love back, you know. My wife, we ride or die for monster. So my wife has been is. informed that there will be monster branded napkins at the at the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you He's got married? A monster yeah. Fountain. So I got, I got, I, I got, wasn't invited. No, you weren't. You are invited. That's the thing. I was invited. We, I am invited. We did. So we did. The, I'm best friends with your brother, and I've known you for fucking thirteen I years. I haven't had the wedding. We we got legally. You just said you you legally got married. Oh, legally got married, married because <laughs> we thought we were gonna have the wedding. So we were like, let's get the legal thing out of the way, and then. Corona hit, so we had to push back and postpone the, the thoughts of the ceremony. Now things are opening up. Of course you're invited. Do you, know, do you know that we're in Corona? Yeah, no, we, we're talking about that. This is yeah. where ground zero, little, right? I was, yeah, I was a little scared to come here. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> this is where it started. Yeah, this tourism has dropped this in the Riverside <laughs> area. This is where it's been manufactured. Yeah. They've been building it in one of these buildings, I heard. Tourism. So, uh, yeah, yeah, the Burrito King's real slow right now. Down <laughs> <the street. laughs> Wait, so you're being Tommy, you're being you're, you're like you're a stock guy now? Yeah, man. I don't know. Like when Corona hit, you had to find we weren't touring, so I had to find something else to take my brain kind of. I haven't not toured since I was 17. So I needed to like focus in on something, you know? So that's what I started doing. So for you it started as oh, we could all do a crack together. That would have been cool. I, I, I was trying to be quiet. We could do it. We no, like, we could do it. Here, we'll do the full crack. Yeah, I'll do a crack. I, I've never oh, done yeah. that here. I'm never opposed to a crack. No. Yeah. <laughs> I've never backed down from a crack. This Thank is you. the. Uh, so I'm not so crack this. All right, put them this... on. You got no wait. We gotta put them to the microphone. On like We're a count of do... three. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna use this on commercials. This right. is gonna be sick. All right, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was crispy. Sample that. I'm gonna make oh. a rap, rap beat out mm -hmm. of that. Later. I'm making a snare drum out of that one. <sighs> I saw that happen on the James Ooh. Corden show last week, so I've been wanting to do that. That's hot. Yeah, he had everybody kind of like pull it to the mics and do it, so I stole that. Later, we'll all, we'll all hit it with like a spoon, and we'll make a tune out of it. Yeah. We got you guys here to do it. We're not very musically talented, but we're like talented. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't put yourself down like that. Don't put yourself in a box, bro. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm well, sure you could do Sweet Home Alabama on the guitar or something. <laughs> I have some tracks on SoundCloud. <laughs> Dan- Danny's, he, he Danny's, face, Danny's face when you said that was literally like, speak for yourself. Yeah, what the fuck? What are you talking about? What was the name of your band when you had in New York, Danny? Uh, Techno Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's yeah. hard body. We just need saying to use it, that. Just saying it so chill. Yeah. Uh, tech, just Techno Satan. Oh, you mean Techno Satan? Yeah. yeah. And that was with Ian Longwell. Yeah, Ian Longwell from like uh, Trouble Andrew and... Santi Gold. Uh, I mean, he plays, he drums for Beck. I think he drums the lights. <laughs> I don't think he's the drummer. I think he just drums the lights right now. Uh, that's that. still pretty cool. That um, is tight. So, Dave, you grew up in Colorado. I did, yes. Yeah. And then, uh, what, what, like, what was your first, like, I- experience into music? Um, so, growing up, my dad, uh, he always played music. He's a, like, a, plays bass, kind of like a, kind of jazzy but not like full jazz so I was always kind of around it and when I was I got into rap music first when I was like really when I was like eight or nine I you loved Tupac up. yeah no I wasn't a rapper but I was you rap I wanted to be a rapper what was your first rap song <laughs> come on no I didn't I didn't I never was a rapper I loved it he was a rapper and then I and then I uh started, eight or nine uh, it's a young that's that's, that's yeah I, I would just watch I would see like Tupac videos on like MTV and shit and I was like oh my god this is so hard I, at eight, I was saying that this is hard. So, um, and then you know, I got kind of got introduced to like the punk rock scene. I started listening to like Rancid and um, Lagwagon, like you know, a, a lot of old school punk stuff. And then it just evolved, and I, I was obsessed. I got my dad bought me a bass guitar when I was like twelve, maybe, and I just was obsessed. So I went from that to guitar, and it's just been evolving ever since. And now we make like electronic music, so it's been a whole. Yeah, the only, guy, the only guy I have to go from lag wagon to Tiesto. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the evolution is real. Hey, man. You, you know? went from Tupac to lag wagon to Tiesto. <laughs> and now I'm back in hip hop. Yeah, so we've gone full yeah. circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> back to Tupac. <laughs> He'll be back on lag wagon next week. <laughs> <laughs> and you grew up in like, uh, you were, well, when I first met you, you were in almost like the biggest pop band ever. Yeah, so that's what people were telling us we were gonna be. We never reached that. <laughs> the It Boys. I was in a music video with you guys. You were. We were. I huge. was too. We were huge in. Uh, <laughs> I did a feature on It Boys track. <laughs> he doesn't remember it. That was, was that was actually their probably their biggest moment. So, yeah, you know what I mean. It was. We talk about it. We talk about it. It's actually yeah. So I was in a, a band called It Boys. It was like a boy band, pretty much. It was a make or break. Kind it of was thing. a boy band. It was. Yeah. What what were you sing, like? Were you what were you? So playing? everybody what sang. You, what so you we all sang there? parts, but I played bass and sang. Yeah, we had like a lead singer, but that's how I met. That's how me and Dave became so close because they took us on tour, and then we became boys, and then I ditched them in the dirt. And, and uh, honestly, uh, wait, who did you? Oh, you ditched the It Boys in the dirt? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. would have too. Yeah. <laughs> we became close because they had dance moves. Yeah, we had so real dance moves. I would come yeah. out on stage and I learned one of like the choreography dance moves. And, and he would do them on them. stage. So we got real close like dancing together. Yeah, yeah. Got, <laughs> we never nothing talked like, about that. There's nothing like dancing with your homie in the night. Yeah, you know? <laughs> you know? We yeah, would just dance together. And like how much practice goes into learning those dance moves? Dude, I think way people want to know. Like, a lot. It took me like two days to learn one song. It was song. a lot. It was a lot. We, had, we were just... Uh, we were like a machine. We were like a major label. Like what like, label were you on? Uh, EMI. EMI. And yeah. like, what? What are they t- like? What do they t- explain to me? Like what they tell you? Like like it, we lied about ages. We like it was a whole thing. They dressed us, lied about ages. They gave us like gym memberships to get in shape. Like it was a whole. <laughs> it was a full on like. So you're basically like a Wilhelmina hot chick model. Yeah. It was. It was. It was a. You're gonna be, like, Justin Bieber. You're gonna be like a machine, like a pop. Machine. But that was pre Justin Bieber. No, it was it was like young Justin Bieber. Oh, like yeah. baby, it's like baby, baby. So when you like lied about your age, did you like say you were like five years younger? So or I what? didn't lie about my age because I was the youngest one. Oh, but okay. everybody else lied. They were all like twenty five, and they all had to say they were like nineteen. Wow, 20. it's like yeah. Saved by the Bell. It was really lame. <laughs> it was super lame, but it was it was fun. And it was did, a good time. Did they were they like telling you like like you can't eat cheeseburgers? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it was like they would call you out if you like came to the office at the label and like didn't look good that day they would straight up call you out they like, changed his name doing? to timothy yeah it was yeah. insane yeah it went by timothy coops <laughs> the whole thing. sick <laughs> when i met you were you timothy <laughs> no no that's a lot <laughs> i couldn't remember i can um, see that happening though you know what i mean yeah i just found out your brother's middle name shalom <laughs> yeah dude that's a whole other thing that's a whole podcast in itself yeah, i swear to god i swear to god we were on the bus the other day 
And Megan's like, yo, is your, is Tatol, is, is Tav's real name Shalom? Yeah, dude. And we had to get Tav on the phone to be like, yeah, like, like yeah. Tav, <laughs> like Tav wasn't bad enough. They had to throw Shalom in there, dude. Yeah, he's the only one with the middle name, too. Like, I don't have a middle name. Tall doesn't have a middle name. But for some reason, with Tav, they were just like, ah, uh, it's Shalom. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oof. Man. So, Tommy, you had a pretty gnarly upbringing. I'm going to yeah. call you Timothy from here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, 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 honestly, so, I've been going by Tim for a minute here. <laughs> uh, Tommy, you had a pretty gnarly upbringing. You know, I know I know all your brothers. There's three of them. Tall, Tav, and Tommy. And uh, you guys grew up in, uh, well, it was... Um, not Ventura. It was uh, Agora. You were in Agora. Yeah, Agora Hills, Calabasas, Agora. And um, your your dad was like cut shipped off pretty early. Yeah, it's so like six at sixteen. My dad got uh, deported from the United States. And your older brother was never a citizen. Neither was I. I was not. You a were ci a citizen. I Dude. wasn't. Yeah. But I didn't know. That's the thing. It's tall, new because he was older. But I was like fifteen. So I would go. I'd be like. Dad, my friends are like getting jobs. Like I want to get a job at the Jamba Juice, like with my homies. And he would literally just be like, "What do you need a job for?" And like, give me money. And like, I just thought that I was like cool. Little did I know I couldn't get a job because I didn't have a social security number. <laughs> but were you born here, or you were born? I was there? born in Israel. So yeah. you were born in Israel. You came here, um, and there was no paperwork. Nothing ever done. Nothing. Nothing was ever done. Uh, and then my dad got arrested for reasons unknown. They found out. They shipped him off, uh, and then they came and like raided our house, and me and Tall like weren't there, and they like took everything. We, I, 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 I literally had a backpack, and I just had to figure life out from 16 on. Isn't that crazy? Because like I've spent you know a lot of time here. Danny helped me when I was a kid getting visas and all these things, and like it was like one of those things where I was like, I came from another country, I had a number, I was somebody where you guys were raised here, and 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 with it wasn't your fault that you didn't, you were just. But you guys had no, you had no ID cards. No, you nothing. Had like, no, nothing. You were like, you could have been shipped back at any moment. My mom used to drive and like be so scared of like getting pulled over by the cops because she didn't have like a license or, you know, like any house we bought, my dad just bought it in cash. Like it was, we didn't, no bank account, no, not like no credit, nothing. It's so crazy because all, all, all three of you guys have become extremely successful, but it's like some people, the heartaches and the, 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 the things behind the closed doors that people don't know about is like insane. Yeah, and, it was wild. And now you're good. You got a, you got a social yeah, security yeah. number. Yeah, I, I got a green card now, social security <laughs> number, the, working what, on the American passport. What's We're the good. number? No, I, <laughs> I actually Dude, what's your number? I actually just had to send it. I had to send it in for something, so I, I have it on my phone if you really want to know. Yeah, no, we'll check it out later. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you. You know, just like I don't believe. Shalom. We got a scanner over there. We're good. <laughs> Ice is waiting in the back, just in case I don't have it. <laughs> so, did you guys first meet on like at like a whoop to a stop, or like where, where, like where was that official meeting? Was it, it was Los in Orange County at uh, Chain Reaction. We had a mutual friend, uh, Lauren. She brought me to their show. They got in a fight with security because he was like hyperventilating on stage. It was so hot, and the venue wouldn't give him more water. And his tour manager like lost it and was just like, my, my artist is like passing out. He needs water. And the venue was like, we've already given you a case of water. We're not giving you more water. So they ended up getting in like a brawl with security. I had never met them before. And I just hopped in the Dude, brawl. It was, oh, that's so it, and that's it, it. it was brutal because we were rolling with like some crazy dudes. Because like when we first started like, any, any one of our friends that like said that they wanted a tour, we were like, dude, hop in the van, let's roll. So we had guys handling stuff that did not know what they were doing. So they, everyone was hammered drunk yeah, all the time. Dudes times. that have never had a job just handling like 50K in merch. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? You just trust them. And uh, yeah, we got in a huge brawl with all the security. It was insane. But yeah, that was like 2008 10, or nine. Yeah, maybe nine, nine? 10, I don't know. Yeah, but like that's that. how we met, became friends, and then we just kept hanging. Um, and then my band did Warp Tour, his band did Warp Tour, so we started being around each other more. And then they were doing a tour, and we wanted to be on the tour, and I texted Dave, and it was a co-headline tour. And the other artists who now we're really good friends with, they wanted to take their friend on tour. And Dave, we weren't even that close, but Dave in front of me texted his manager and said, tell that band if they don't let It Boys on the tour, uh, we're going to leave the tour. Like, he was, like, drunk or something and just wrote this super aggressive message. Were you drunk? Yeah, it was our, like, headlining tour. And for some reason, I said, if they don't let him on the tour, I'm leaving yeah, the tour. Yeah, we're leaving the tour. And then the next day, we were on the tour. And then, yeah, we just became super close. Um, and then I heard that they were getting – that their keyboard player didn't want to tour anymore. He's, like, keyboard guitar player. 
So I hit up Dave. We went to sushi, and we've been rocking the world ever since. Sushi yeah. just makes the world go around. It eh? does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Changed it all, man. It makes everything better. You said that stuff about people not knowing what they're doing. That's just like us at Grenade. We didn't. We had. 30 people not knowing. There was n no oh, idea. over. Yeah, it was like 30 to 50 people. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Dude, not knowing like, what they're doing. Like 50 people not knowing what they're yeah. doing together is yeah. wild. I love it. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Yeah, a lot of good mistakes happened. But know? it's the same. Yeah. It's because it's you guys were like kids and you were punk rock. It's like when you grow up in like a punk rock mentality, you just you want to see your friends succeed. So you just give everybody jobs and you're like taxes what <laughs> like yeah. it's not you don't you don't you don't know about any of that yeah stuff. you're like you've left the country you're international sales yeah. man. Yeah. Like, all right he's like i've been to canada you're like yeah <laughs> i exactly. drove to mexico for spring break one time dude i'm down <laughs> yeah rory's been to tijuana he <laughs> man what was it's it's sad because obviously there's been you know no live events no nothing but like you know the warp tour actually closed down before the pandemic came anyway but you guys, I feel like, hit it at a point where, like, that was probably a pretty cool time or a pretty gnarly time to be be in that situation. You know, I've been to a couple of other, other later Warp Tours, and, you know, it's funny because we're even talking about the, the monster water in the can. Like, that's where that came from. This is bringing me back, bro. You know? Like, I haven't seen one of these. I'm, like, holding it with my all my pride. Yeah. I'm like, I love you. <laughs> like, But that's it. Like, I remember the first time I went to a Vans Warp Tour, like, like the monster water was like god like that was like it was it, that was that it was gold it was yeah 100 like percent. because the the, the the venues i went to there like some of them like it was crazy because i just I, I guess i never really understood it you know i'm used to being on a bus with danny and going to snowboard events and whatnot but like when you go to like a festival a warp tour in the middle of the summer and you're in some parking lot and you realize that there's some buff kids have buses but most of them are in vans you guys are showering basically in toilets and there is no water and i was and and, and that's why that the monster in the can like the monster the water in the can became so popular because it was keeping you guys alive well yeah. it got so cold if you had a if you had monster water in like a cooler because it was the can it got so freezing cold that when you're in texas and it's 120 degrees like nothing feels better and the best is like people wouldn't believe us because we'd be like we'd have family coming they're like oh my god can i have a water it's 120 degrees outside i'm like yeah <laughs> here you go they're like no 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 i need a water i'm like yeah here you go they're like it's not water i'm like yeah it is and they would drink it and be like oh my god this is the best thing ever like just because it looks like a monster you know what i mean yeah are those days like for those type of shows like is, do you think that'll like will that will that moment happen again like the warp tour I, I hope it does but dude there there is something so like in the heart of warp tour that was is so special like think about it, the used my cam like my cam go you just go through it and it's like any band any band yeah it's like, like the dream is like a, a teenage kid like you could watch 10 of your favorite punk bands that you would never get exactly. to see it like a show or local for but, 50 bucks but you could get your parents to drop you off with three thousand other kids and watch bad religion and watch no effects yeah watch my these mom, guys, my you mom know? started like crying because she came to the ventura warp tour and watched us play like we had main stage at like 3 p.m it was like the most people you could fit in the area and she was like i used to like drop you off here at this exact venue <laughs> And pick you up hours later for years and now just like you're on main it's just it was just a crazy like even, full circle moment. even still like after playing the main stage like even when you're playing the tour on the tour like you're still kind of in awe because like if you grew up going to warp tour you're like i never knew what happened back here you mm -hmm. know what i mean like now i see and you're getting both angles and it's just crazy i was still and i was you know we were i would you know we, we were one of the biggest bands on our year the last year we did and i was still walking around watching bands every day like that's all i would do is just like walk around get in like a little bit of a like cardio and go watch bands all day it was just fun yeah the last one uh, the last one i went to was um when lincoln park like did the surprise yeah performance that's the one we were on. dave that, sang with that, them that, that, right yeah you did right yeah oh that was scary it was man. you austin carlisle from of my man at the time yeah um and shout out to austin just had a baby oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 uh machine gun kelly yep you and then who else? Jeremy McKinnon, they remember. I think uh, Tyler from the U from uh, the issues. Yeah, Tyler from issues. I think that's it. I feel like there was one or two more. Oh, but Yellow yeah. Card. Uh, Ryan yeah. from Yellow Card. Ryan from Yellow Card. Yeah, and I think that was it. That was wild. Wild. Like I to see a band that big on a stage like that. Like, what was it like? So, I because I, I actually drove up in the bus with Shinoda and Anna, me and Toll, and then everybody else came separately. That Lincoln Park always kind of like 
they would all come separately. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, they brought their own stage, man. They brought, <laughs> they brought, they brought their own really? stage. Yeah. But like, what I want to know, like, I, I saw you guys all going in, what, what, one, like one for one with Chester. Yeah. Like, had you met Chester before? I had, I had not met him before. I had not met any of them before. And I think Tall called me or called you or something and was like, "Yo, do you want to do this?" I was like, "Well, yeah," but I'm like scared shitless. And Chester was like, "I want, I, I want to meet with you in the." They had like a. What are those star trailer things? What are they That's called? I think it was what star called. trailer. And dude, it was so nerve wracking. Like, cause he, we had to play the song on a guitar and just sing like him and I, and like, it and, was just and Dave. We talk about this all the time is the Dave song. It was a big song, but it's not like he was doing crawling or in the end, like one of those songs that you just have heard so many times that you just know it. It was like, it was like a obscure single, like a third single on like the third album or something. So it's not like a song that he had grown up singing his whole life. Oh, right, right. So, dude, it was it was crazy though. Now I, I would just remember I was so nervous, like I like just because it's looked up to that band forever, and you know what I mean. They're like the biggest band in the world. So it was uh, it was kind of. I remember after we did the song, I was just like so nervous and so happy that I didn't fuck it up that like I just ran off the stage and they were like all looking at me like wanted to like give me a hug and like say thank you and stuff, but I just dipped because I was all nervous. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, straight up. Dave went back to the bus and cried for three days. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. I was like, yeah. then I got up. I was like, what happened? What? <laughs> I blacked out. I've, I've never been nervous for a show before in my life. Like, I mean, you know, anticipation nerves are normal, but never been, like, scared nervous. And that one, uh, that one got me, for sure. Man, it's been a minute since he's been gone, too. Like, I feel like I remember exactly where I was when he passed. I was live on the radio. Oh, I was shit. live on the Jason Ellis show on Sirius XM and it hit like TMZ and they read it and like somebody made a joke about it and I was like, I think they just said just the fucking died and I just walked out of the radio station so I'm like, and I just started crying and I was like, fuck, like, where fuck. Were we? I think we were in Asia. We were in Europe going oh, to Tomorrowland. Yeah, yeah, we were on our way we to were a on festival our way, like yeah. in, the, in the transport and uh, we like read it out loud. Yeah, it killed them. It killed the vibe for sure. You know, and I just feel like, what? Does does a band like that ever happen again? No, I don't. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see how, because you could like, what do you what do you have right now? You have like Twenty One Pilots, and you have like those bands, but I just don't know that like, like they made such a stamp on like the scene and music that I just don't. I, don't I feel know. like I could maybe see a band getting to like that size, but as like influential as Linkin Park was. I don't know. That's very hard. Well, yeah, to because you have talk. like Imagine Dragons are like that size, but, but they're like, just like a pop. But band. that's what I'm saying yeah. is like is like are they gonna make like a stamp to where they're changing people's lives? Like I don't I don't know. I, it's it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you started MySpace, right? Like that was that was your big that was yeah. You started MySpace. Right? Yeah, yeah. I had, I had You're a hand Tom. In it. You founded MySpace. I had a hand in it. <laughs> You know, I played a poker tournament and I sat next to Tom the whole time. Oh, man, really? So yeah, lucky. he was basically like, "Dude, I'm just a, I'm just a wannabe photographer and I fly around the world taking pictures." Is he still, is he still wearing that <laughs> shitty white shirt that he was wearing in that picture? No, he's just exactly the same. <laughs> he's just a dog that's like, "I'm rich." Yeah, straight up. Sick. <laughs> but like, it's crazy because like, my, my my space gave like such an avenue back then for people like yourselves. Like it, like it, 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 like. Uh, you know, yourself, I think Hollywood Undead, there were bands that were yeah. like MySpace built. Oh, yeah. Dude, we didn't even have, uh, between Kyle and I, uh, the, the guy that started with me, like, we uh, we didn't even have a computer. We had to go to the library to, like, sign on to MySpace and, like, write fans. And, like, that's how we did it. We'd go to the library. And, um, and then one of my friends had a computer, and he was, like, a total dickhead, like, would have never let us use it, but he would go to work. I'd sneak on to his computer, make the songs, save them, hide them so he couldn't see them, and he'd come back to work and we'd just pretend like nothing happened. We did this for like six months. <laughs> Until <laughs> finally I was like, I was like, yo man, I've been recording all these songs. On Were your you computer. touching my drum set? No, I was watching cops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it these, was like that. These are songs that were being, then being played on MySpace. Yeah, yeah. So we, we created the profile <laughs> in the library and then uh, we made the songs. And for some reason when we made our profile, like we were just getting follows and hit. there was no music. There was nothing. There was one picture and then we were just getting so much attention. I don't know what it was from. Like, I have no idea. And then we put songs up and then it was just kind of, we went on tour like three months after that and then literally never stopped. You had 30 million plays on MySpace in 2009. Like today that's equivalent to, you know, 30 million 
plays on Spotify is a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to think like back then people weren't used to streaming, so like. And there was no. Could you say was... like one to ten? Like for every one is like probably yeah, because it wasn't normal to stream music back then. Like and, and, you would go buy a CD. So now and there's no there, there was no playlist makers. There was yeah. nobody like people had to come and find you on MySpace. Yeah. Like you know now you get put in you know New Music Fridays. You're instantly getting three million streams just because you're in the playlist yeah, or exactly. whatever. Like MySpace is like I gotta go search and find and it's all word of mouth. It was so low key. What do you think the downfall of that MySpace music was? Dude, I, I don't know. I mean, you could chuck it up to anything, but maybe it was just like the oversaturation from Facebook and then, you know, everyone was kind of doing the same thing that they started looking for something else. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. I can't even get, like, there's one photo of me and Kanye West that's on my MySpace page, but I can't get into my MySpace page. <laughs> yeah, I can't get into mine either. I, I was oh, like, yeah, you want it? <laughs> yeah. You want that photo? That's th That would be the old time No one believes Thursday. him that he knows Kanye. Nobody believes that we're boys. <laughs> yeah. Danny's like, he's been talking he's about like, dude, this he's still photo in my with top Kanye. Eight. <laughs> that was the thing with MySpace, was like the top eight, though. Oh, that get ruined, you in so much trouble. That ruined relationships. Because you couldn't, like, yeah, if you had a girlfriend, she wasn't in your top eight. That was bad. Or dude. some other girl was in your top eight. Woo. You get in a mm -hmm. fight with one of your homies and just like, Skirt, oh yeah, they you drop out, moved you to four. Like it was like a huge deal. I mean, dude, there's website developers that like started by coding people's MySpaces. Like if you had a cool looking MySpace back in the day, you were hip, dude. You had to pick the right song to put on there. Oh, yeah. It was a whole thing. Yeah, it was a vibe. My page was a vibe. So how did this happen? How did you guys, like where was the, I'm in. Fuck well, you, Kyle. You're out. <laughs> well, uh, I think it, it was just a weird series of events. I think like when he, like he said earlier, like he came on that tour with us um, and started playing with us. Like we just kind of like had like bigger goals for ourselves and started talking about like other shit we wanted to do. And it kind of like slowly everyone else wasn't, I don't know if they like weren't on board, but like it kind of seemed like it just became like us two and everyone else was kind of just like riding you know what i mean and um we just kind of were like dude like let's just do what we want to do and and uh yeah yeah it was it was, it, was, it, was like a, it was a series of events like like it was it was i was in the live band because it was dave and kyle and it was like three of us were like the live band like we were in the band and treated like we were in the band but the pictures and stuff were dave and kyle then kyle we had a falling out with him on this tour he kind of went crazy what happened he was just having a baby and his girl at the time was crazy and he was just having a lot of like mental issues. I think it was like problems. a lot of stress and uh, yeah. just, you know, we, we just I, weren't getting along great. Yeah. And that was out on the Vans Wolf tour? No, it was on our tour. It was, was, it was, oh, it, that was just on your own tour? It was, it was a summer tour. Uh, it was uh, us and We the Kings, uh, Travis Mills, T Mills. Um, it was a sick big tour and yeah, in the middle of it. It was, was my first tour. So I'm like, hell yeah. I just joined BC. We're doing the sick ass tour. Three days in, I'm like, oh my God, we're about to kick out like the main guy. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, I just left my other band. We're about to fall apart. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll start looking for a job. And then, uh, yeah, we let we left him in Norfolk, Virginia, because he really did just, he'll tell you, he like lost his mind. He was treating everybody like shit. We left him. You know, we had like a, a semi panic attack because for so long it was Dave and him, and we were like, all right, well, what are we gonna do? We literally were considering like, we'll get him like a bu another bus that he can like follow our bus. Like we just won't like mess with him anymore, but he can still play the shows. And we were worried, and we played one show without him, and everybody on the tour came up to us, and they were like, yo, like your energy, the vibe on stage was so sick. Like you guys, like like not that you don't need him, but it was like you're not lacking anything. You guys can do this. So we got like this sense of confidence. And we just pushed through, man. We went and did our record like without him. And because he wasn't in the group anymore and he was like the screamer, we doubled down on like the electronic side of our sound and with Dave singing and, and really like focused more in on the electronic sounds. And that kind of evolved into us wanting to play more of the dance and electronic side of shows. And everybody else kind of fell by the wayside when me and Dave started taking that super seriously. And, and, and one day we just looked at each other and we're like, yo, like, Everybody else kind of seems to be lacking in the in the grind department, so let's kind of just push through like us. But there was also a transfer there, I think, in music in general, right? Yeah, like of course. Fans Warp Tour, that vibe was going out the door. It was changing, right? Yeah, and we saw that happening. Like we we had a, we made a we had a conscious talk where we were like, "Yo, every band on the tour is kind of acting like they don't want to be here and they're too good to be here." And we were like, "This is gonna like implode because yeah. the scene in itself is kind of like." 
these bands don't want to be a part of it, so the fans are going to pick up on that vibe, and they're not going to want to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. There was there was like a big like not like negative vibe about the Warp Tour, but like everyone didn't want to be a Warp Tour band all of a sudden. And we were never like that. We no. were just like, yo, like we, you know, we've been electronic for a long time. We're we, we're we're gonna take some time off, focus on building this side of our things, not like f the Warp Tour, blah blah. But all the bands did. So we were like, is this gonna like? Why Why do you think they did that? Dude, I don't know. I, I mean, I think every band, I think, wanted to, like, be on the radio. And for some reason, they thought if you were Warped Tour, you couldn't be on the radio. And it was like, dude, we had a huge pop hit. And the whole time we were on Warped Tour, like, you can definitely do both. The, the music's good enough and you do the right things. Like, And I, I don't know. There was just that mentality. Every band that we were talking with, they were like, yeah, like, we just don't want to do Warped at all the time. It anymore. gives you a I'm false like, sense of reality, too, because you play every day. And there's 15,000 kids at your stage. And you're like, these are our fans. Like, we could just go play a 15,000 person show. Yeah. What you don't realize, it's like, yeah, I went to Bamboozle and 50 Cent was playing and there was 100,000 people watching. But it's like, I don't know that 100,000 people are showing up to a 50 Cent concert. It's like, they're there because they'll go watch. Yeah. It, but it's like, it's it, it gives you this false sense that you're bigger than you are. And I think a lot of bands got this false sense of reality where they're like, we don't need to do this anymore. Like, we'll just play our own huge, like every yeah. band overextends themselves after playing main stage they'll play main stage warp tour their next tour will be in venues that are probably a little too big for them yeah because they're like oh dude we're, we're this big and then it's like ah you're probably like one step down you gotta like yeah up yeah because it's a bummer from outside of the world because it being the vans warp tour and it was such a staple for action sports it yeah. was like it kept it thriving right and i think a lot of the kids dress that way they still wear the vans they still wear the skinny jeans they still like and a part part of that is like definitely definitely gone you know what i mean yeah. it's like even even you you played at x games right yeah we did an aspen yeah 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 and it's like those things are so important i think you know for us to be able to on the action sports side it's like we we, we need music to keep some of our stuff relevant that's a fact you yeah know? so it's <clears> like to be able to keep those things going like when did music like when did music get added to aspen was that like 2010 uh, I mean, they always kind of do like the fun, like after show stuff, but I think it was like, yeah, 2013, 14 is when like they really started bringing in like the main stage and like getting some more actual like good acts within X Games. Yeah. yeah. That's why when you did it, right? I think we did it maybe like, yeah, at the end 2012, whenever X Games is in 2012, maybe or something like yeah. that. Like, um, but it was sick. Yeah, yeah, it was dope. Didn't you guys like, weren't you like not able to land? and had to like turn around or something well, yeah because we flew into aspen and yeah it was just like it was like the aspen airport obviously is sketchy so like you, it, there's no clearance so we just circled and went back to dia came back circled again couldn't land we did it like four times and i was like we could just drive i mean <laughs> yeah. it's like two and a half D hours brother dave's used to it he grew yeah. up there yeah i'm like dude i was, i grew up in the mountains you know yeah. what i mean so he calls himself a mountain boy all the time yeah i'm from the mountains baby Mount you, oh, yeah. you're two mountain boys over here yeah that's, that's right. Right. we're city slickers yeah, yeah. <laughs> well dave uses it like as like if he can't like figure something out he's like i'm from the mountains yeah that's not my thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like dude, it's, a, it's a printer right <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't dude, have I service here i can't connect with printers i can't figure that shit out blue Bluetooth does not exist for me. Yeah, man. We're from, that's because we're from the mountains, dude. Yeah. You know Dave, I mean? still, Dave still uses the tape deck aux cord. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. So in 2013, you guys started dating? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's when we got together, man. Yeah. yeah. Made it official. Yeah. yeah. And then what was that? What, 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 ha, ha, like, what was the plan? Was there a plan? Was it like, we're going to go play these festivals we're gonna what were you doing insomniac events first like how did it, how did so it start? there was a plan the plan didn't work out right away so <laughs> yeah we were like yeah we'll just play dance shows like we love this style of music this this how hard could it be and we literally it was a year we learned really fast that the dance music space is so like protected by those fans and those promoters and those things that they didn't want us to be a part of it because they thought like you guys aren't DJs. You guys aren't EDM producers. You're just trying to grab like a quick check because like EDM is blowing up. And we're like, no, like we're super in love with it. That's what we want to do. So we had to turn down. I mean, we literally like there was a year where we didn't have a dollar of income. And we were turn we were like selling guitars to pay rent while also turning down like two, three million dollars in rock touring because we didn't want people to think that we were like double dipping. So we had to like we were talking to each other every night like bro, what are we going to do? Like, if this doesn't work out, we're, we're like, we're like alienating ourselves from this, but like, we're not really getting this. So what are we going to do? And our agent came on board at UTA and he was like, I can make this happen. Like, like, let's just grind it out. And he just 
pounded promoters, man, until one of them gave us a shot. And because we had hard ticket fans from rock, from like the rock world, and most EDM DJs don't have hard ticket fans, they kind of just show up to a nightclub and play. We were bringing and selling out these venues that usually just have like bougie people at them. And they were like, yo, like you guys sold Sutra nightclub out two weeks in advance. This has never happened before. And we're oh. like, yeah, we have fans. And that promoter told this promoter, told that promoter. And all of a sudden it just snowballed. And then, I mean, the last three years we haven't not been on, other than coronavirus, we haven't not toured a weekend since we start, since that started. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh. Cause I, I, I like remember watching you guys kind of start doing the club stuff. And I was like, oh, they fucking got it. Because you guys have the rock star vibe. Yeah. And it's like, let's be honest. EDM at that point, it was like, Skrillex was like the only one that had a vibe. The yeah. rest of them are, Skrillex, like, Skrillex I'm, going, I'm not going to talk shit, but like, they're all, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah, yeah. Cut, like boring, look, you know what I mean? They were yeah, boring, yeah. like, young, they're like computer kids. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it's like, you know, and I'm, you know, they're all cool, but I'm just saying they're, they're not they that cool. They <laughs> yeah, they're not that Fuck cool. Fuck them. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love them. I love everybody. <laughs> but like, they're, uh, it, 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 when I when I saw that transformation happen, I was like, dude, they're like they bring. It was almost like the first time I saw MGK perform. I was like, oh, like what is it? You see him perform live, and this is like the first time I saw him live. I think it was in like 2010, or, and I was like, holy shit! Right. Yeah. He just lit up the stage like a rock show, and he was a rapper at the time. Yeah. You know, and it was like bringing that bringing that band, bringing the stuff around it. You guys did the exact same thing. You took the rock fly to the EB, EDM. You're like. All right, nightclub world. Yeah. You guys want to fucking rage? Yeah. We're going to play our stuff and we're going to play, we're going to, and we light it up and it just made sense. Seeing you two jump around on the stage, I was like, oh. Yeah, hey. like we would play Vegas and Dave would just go out into the crowd and like get on somebody's table that they paid 20 grand for and like sing in their face. There'd be like and nine security guards like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah. dude, I do this all the time. Yeah, brothers. we're good, brother. Don't worry about it. Head yeah, on back. And that's just kind of what we said. We, we, we saw like this opening where we're like, yo, there is nobody doing there's nobody like and like we've gotten like written up and like stuff where it's like a, 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 a like a rock show at a rave where like there wasn't that and we were like yo like especially for our style of EDM it's all European guys that are all like from the Netherlands and they're very clean cut and they all have the same picture like and we were just like yo we're like tattooed we're punk rock kids we're gonna like light it up it's gonna be sick and our label everybody was just like what is this and we're like yeah this is sick we're doing we're doing our thing yeah you guys were playing china a lot yeah yeah a lot how's that sick it's great yeah i, th I think uh electronic music like exploded in asia and it just became like the main probably like the main event space in you know especially china like the main events were these big festivals and these you know every city has so many people so many nightclubs so there's just so much opportunity and we love it like we 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 have a cool team over there that we go with we have like a translator so we can talk with everybody and like we love it we always love going there and it's just sick it's so much fun yeah asia's the best the rules are stricter in asia every time we get we used to go there they used to uh the chaperones used to be like don't do this don't do that don't do this don't yeah do this. like no we're gonna go do that we're <laughs> fine with this <laughs> yeah like this is not acceptable <laughs> You'll go to jail forever for that. Yeah, no, what? We're, we're we're always very careful. Like when we're out there, I mean, especially me because I'm like more paranoid than he is. So I'll be like, dude, I don't know if we can take a picture over there. It might be like a sacred. Well, ground. I mean, Dave like, I almost know. went to jail in Thailand for a jewel, dude. We walked out of True. a hotel. Dave hit a jewel. Two two cops pulled up on us. Straight up, you're going to jail right now. Three nights in jail. He just broke his arm on stage. So the night got, before. He's got like a cast on. Wait, you broke your arm on stage? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that happened. Yeah. Dude, I mean, it, it, it was it was my hand, but it was literally like, it was this festival in Bangkok, and it was the first second. We walked on the stage, I jumped up onto the stage, and I think, like, my knee, like, hit my hand weird against the table, oh. and I was like, ooh, that felt weird, but we had just started the set, so I was like, whatever, and all of a sudden, I realized I couldn't feel my hand, and it was just kind of like this. And it was like, it, we could it was like 30,000 people, fireworks. Pyro, like it was huge. Yeah. So for this an hour, arm, he's just so he's like, no, you're good, dude. Yeah, dude. For an hour, I'm like, I'm like don't look at it, don't look at it. Because we, fucked. there's a part in the, it's there's fucked. a part in the set where we switch and he DJs and I like get on the mic and like go out there. He was like, yo, dude, I'm just gonna rock the mic, dude. I can't like, I can't DJ. And I, I got off and my hand was swollen like huge. And they had it. I was like, we have video of it. There's he got taken away in a, an ambulance. They're like, like, we're gonna need that video. By oh way. yeah, we'll get you the vid. Dude, they're yeah. like, they're like, you need to go to the the, the hospital. 
and I was like, well, there's the after party. They're yeah. like, <laughs> he came. Yeah. Yeah. They're, like, they're like, no, you need to go to the hospital. I was like, well, how long is the after party going? No, he came <laughs> to the after party with the huge yellow envelope with his x-rays <laughs> and the cast, and he's just at the after party holding his x-rays. <laughs> I didn't want to miss the party. Savage. Yeah, it was fire. <laughs> I, was, I was like, yo, I'll just go tomorrow. I'll party tonight. What did the guy do? He just started, the, the, they didn't really speak English that well. So Dave was like, can I go tomorrow? And the guy was like, huh? And the translator was like, tomorrow. And the guy just went, oh, no way. His, <laughs> his arm is broken. <laughs> like, he, was, he just started laughing when we asked if he could go tomorrow. <laughs> So then, yeah, he almost got arrested with the broken arm. That was, that was a horrible it was a It was a rough two days. I had to pay... Uh, Fines and it was like a whole thing. It was crazy. No way. Yeah. By fines, we had to pay them on the spot to not go to jail. <laughs> yeah. Was I that, didn't know if I wanted to say that. What was it in? Uh, it's bot. bot. Uh, oh, you're in Bangkok. Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. Yeah. We're still unsure of the amount. We just kept taking it out of an ATM until it wouldn't give us anymore and gave him that amount. <laughs> yeah. It was like was. three hundred dollars worth. <laughs> yeah. And I don't. I don't think it was anything crazy. It was maybe like twelve hundred bucks. But I, he was like, it was a Saturday, so he's like, the judge can't see you till Monday. You're gonna spend two nights in a Bangkok jail, and I just broken my hand. I was That's like, yo, not- no, 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 no. I'm gonna run. Is what's gonna happen. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm gonna take off running. I'm gonna, Bro, I'm gonna disappear into Bangkok. The translator they gave us, we called her on WhatsApp, and we're like, we're like, can you talk to him? And she's like, okay. And then she, he gave me the phone back, and uh, the girl's like, yeah, no, this is bad. He's going to jail. Yeah. And I was like, like, don't you, freak out. I was like, can you come here jail. because we can't understand what these guys are saying? Can you come here? And this girl just goes. Oh, my boyfriend's here. I can't just like leave right now and like come over there. I'm like, <laughs> he's going to jail. Like, what do you mean you can't leave? That's your job. No, because yeah. they know you fucked up. They're like, don't talk to them anymore. It's good. Yeah. They're done. They're it done. Was, You're not talking to them again. It was pretty brutal, man. It was scary. Like he looked at me at one point and he was just like, dude, you could just like leave me here. I don't, I don't know. I was, <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, I put my hands behind my back. I was like, I'm just yeah. going to jail. We're going to Starbucks. Just, just go without me. Just go on. It's, you just be brief. We were going to, <laughs> we were going to Starbucks, and he was like, he was like, dude, you could just go Starbucks. Like, just leave me here. I was like, I'm not just. <laughs> leave you here. How good's a Starbucks though when you're in Asia? Oh my, oh my god. god. That's a best. safety net. They just haven't found the oat milk yet or the almond milk. So you gotta do soy milk. But their mm. pastry selection? Bro, oh, dude. Next on level. Point. On point. Next level. It's like whenever you're overseas, I always know that a McDonald's burger. You're always safe. A Starbucks and a Heineken. You're, you're safe. Good. Yeah. Those three? Yep. You're good. good. Yeah, go. you're good. Yeah. Uh, the first time you guys started going to China, was it was there like wait, hang on. Have you guys been to like some like was there a story where you guys were taken to a show and that they basically bust these people in and were like teaching them about music and like yes. would have signs? Is that, is that a true story? So yeah. in, in, in some areas in China, like it's, it's, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's not as, it's not like, you know, it's not like a major city. So. I've been there because I did the Great Wall of China uh, with the Arctic Challenge uh, with Travis Rice. Were you there for the, on the Oakley trip in like 2006? No, not in China. So it was they did a quarter pipe up there, and but by, by where the wall of China is there, and we were we were way out of our element. Yeah, let's just say that. So there's areas where like they're new to having shows and new to having music, so they want they want like the artists to feel like good. So like there's the people that go there, and then they also hire like other people to be like the hype. People, which is not a horrible idea for a it's venue. It's actually a fire idea. So they hire like a hundred people. <laughs> so they hire hype people. They yeah. hire like a hundred people. There's actually a job in China where it's like, all right, you're going to go to festivals and teach people how to fucking That's break. exactly what it is. So yeah. like there's people in the in the venue and then there's like a hundred people that are like on the outskirts just going so hard to like get everybody else to go. So we went to do a sound check and there were just those people. And there was like a guy like yelling at them and they were like, <laughs> Danny, <laughs> Danny, I got, I got a, j- me and you got jobs forever. Oh, yeah. bro. oh dude, you would kill it over there. <laughs> there You'd are be like, hype it up, <laughs> everybody scream, bring the megaphone back. On the count of oh, three, yeah. you jump. Yeah, yeah. 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 maybe it's like a, a <laughs> like a shock stick or the taser would work well too. <laughs> maybe we can try. Maybe we can go to the next Winter Olympics and we can try that. There you go. You, you can be my coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not in the major cities, but like you know, we'll play like like a pretty off-brand city, and, and and you'll see some stuff, some weird stuff like that. Yeah, China's crazy. It's a, it's sick. It's it a is. big place. It's a it's a whole new world. Like I I brought my my wife there the last time we went. Right, we literally got home right before they closed the border off. And uh, you know, I always told her about China, but like you could talk about China all day long until you go there and you are there in China. You're like, oh my god, this is a whole new world. Right. Whole new thought. Pro- everything's a different thought process. Everything is different, and I we love it because it's just like you know, you're fully 
experiencing a whole new way of life. It's the best hospitality on the entire place. Like they yeah. take care of you like you have never been taken. That care depends of. who you're with and where you are. Oh uh, well. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Let me rephrase. When you're famous in China, yeah, they yeah, take yeah. care of you. They're not busting in hype people where I am. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you that much. They're busting people out. <laughs> <laughs> is there like talk on like when um, you guys would potentially like head back to some of these overseas gigs? August, man. We just got an offer for August. Yeah. In China. Yeah. Yes. They're big. They are huge in China. Yeah. Wow. Look, I'm not going to lie to you and say we're not famous in Asia, but like we go to Asia and, <laughs> you know. So all one cool, or two huh? people yeah. know who we are. Yeah. And it's like that in the there. snowboard world where like we travel to Japan and they have such a snowboard culture there. It's crazy. And it's like, whoa. Yeah. You're like, these people love snow and snowboarding. No, yeah. no, no, no. Like, we leave the insane. airport. We leave the airport, and there's kids with signs like, Daddy Cass, yeah. Daddy Cass. That's like, sick. It's like, crazy. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't get into my own show here, but we go to Asia, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, there's kids waiting outside. There's a huge 400-foot billboard we got to sign while they're all, like, singing our songs out loud. I'm like, whoa, this is sick. <laughs> Who wants to be famous in America anyway? I mean, I want to go to Starbucks without getting hassled, bro. You know what I'm For saying? once in our lives, we yeah. just want to like walk around without being ran down. You know there was I mean? when we went to Korea, South Korea. There was a Korean dingo, and this dude followed us around everywhere, like battling me. That's what? Awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. He was like shirt off in the club. We need videos of that. Yeah. By the end of the night, they were both shirt off together. South Korea is sick too. We got we went there. That was it. Awesome. Was you guys really big cool. there? Yeah. I mean, we played a huge show there. We so the first time we went was crazy because we were in Asia and then we had South Korea. We had already booked the flights to South Korea. They hit us up saying the festival couldn't get the permits, got canceled. I don't know why we looked at each other and went like, the well, flights are booked. Let's just go to South Korea. Yeah. So we just went to South For Korea. For like five days. But the South the, Korean airline? The I don't know. I don't remember. What it was. The festival was canceled. So all of our personnel was canceled. So they just gave us one guy, this guy, Mac, not a lick of English not to deal with word. us. Not a word. And he just kept going, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> That's all he did. He just kept saying, oh, massage? Yeah. <laughs> massage? We were like, I mean, we've already had three massages today. He said like, massage and bulgogi. That yeah. is it. <laughs> That's <laughs> all he knew. What and was he just bulgogi. And bulgogi. It's Kore the Korean barbecue. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he yeah. just took us to Korean barbecue every night and to get massages. That's and not, what the, the, we not the weird kind of massages. We were like nice, like actual massages. Oh, what's a weird massage? You know, I don't man. know. We don't man. know. We just we've heard about it. Some people yeah. listening might get the weird idea about yeah. it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So is is the are you guys going to China in August? Yeah, I think so. We have a there's there's a visa um basically contingency set in place where like they have to approve the visas. But we have the offer, so if the visas get approved then for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's an we're insomniac going. offer, so I would assume they're gonna It's a fourteen day quarantine, so Oh it is. Yeah, yeah and like so. military guard, like you're in a hotel. But yeah. you would obviously stay there a long time, right? Well, see, that's another thing is we, we have the one festival offer. So our agent's like, okay, we'll pair this with six to eight other shows. If everything comes together, then we'll do it. I yeah. think it's hard to go for just the one. You know what I mean? But if we can route it and it's, uh, you know, we're there for a couple of weeks, it makes sense. Just stay there. One of our, dude, one of our friends went to, went to Taiwan. Never left. Has not left. He's, he's just because he's, he's yeah. from he's from the Netherlands. Is and he, he was just is he alive? Yeah, yeah, he's good. Ooh, he was check. he was in the Netherlands and he's just like, dude, like there's no signs of the Netherlands opening. He's like, why would I go back? He literally just stayed there and he just lives there now. And he's he's like, I'll go home when it's open. Yeah, and he's just playing shows in like that area. Yeah, let's. I haven't I haven't been home in 15 months. You know, it's like I don't. It's a quarantine. You got to quarantine for two weeks in a hotel. You don't know what hotel you're in. They give you a bag of food each day. I've had a couple friends do it. They had to do it, and they said, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. So a lot just, of the a lot of the UFC guys that are from like Australia and stuff, yeah. they, they they say it's like super hard because you have to. I mean, it, and it's, those dudes are mentally trained. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I, I can't sit still for two seconds. Yeah, exactly. I jump out the window. I think it's I think it's gonna be brutal. We're 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 gonna see if we can like maybe get like a a suite and quarantine all together. If we bring like a videographer, or whoever, like, yeah, if we get a six suite with like a balcony. Balcony's good. I'm like, yeah. if we get a penthouse at the W in Shanghai, I'll do it. Yeah, like, I'll, <laughs> I'll do it. It's crazy though, because I know Insomniac. They like they would. They, they, he's got big deals over there, and it's like yeah. they like they were working on big shows. It it makes sense, man. There's a lot of people there, and yeah, that's good, man. It makes me feel good. Like the Winter Olympics are coming up there, and we just 
we need things to keep moving. Yeah. yeah. You know, 100%. like I can't, I can't, I can't sit still anymore. Well, we yeah. did it. We did a year of sitting still. Like, st- you know, let's. I'm done sitting. Yeah. When yeah. are the when are the X Games? Uh, or well, Winter Olympics? Sorry, the, the, the China. Uh, but the chi- well, next year. So the Olympics, Summer X Games, Summer Olympics are in um, J- June, J- July, Kim, July. They just got moved yeah, this right? summer. They were supposed to be last. Yeah, they were year, supposed right? to be last summer. They moved it, and they're they're going ahead with it. They're saying everything. What city? It'll be like the biggest unspectator event in the world. Oh, there will not be because they built there. all these stands for like seventy five thousand people. They're and not they'll just have like personnel up. and like oh, okay. uh, maybe uh, like two or three family members or something, and like so it'll be pretty wild. Yeah. So summer, which is delayed a year, so they were supposed to go run last year. So summer would run this year. And then winter would run next year, so next next February. So it'll be like the oh. world's largest sound check. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so like, the Winter oh. Olympics are all, like seriously, the Winter Olympics would be February next year. Yeah. Yeah. Next year. Wow. So it's like a six month. In China, break. you guys should play. What city? You guys should just what city stay in there? China? Uh, Wu Wuhan. Oh, Wuhan. 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 <laughs> we've been there. We've been is, there many times. Is that a good city? Oh, it's a great city. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where it is? Dude, I believe there, so. I know there it's isn't called a like. Bad city. Like no, the private not. garden or something special garden. Is like, like we, we, we've been be there, right? I should be there, yeah. I'll be there uh, hopefully coaching. Danny's a coach now. Oh, I was like, are you competing in the Olympics? <laughs> well, you have I before, mean, right? If, yeah, I have. I Two have Olympic twice. silver medals. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I didn't compete in them. I, I won them. I won the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a really cool experience to go and just see those stands, you know, and just like. <sighs> yeah, that's sick. Um, I was in the stands. Yeah. Dingo was in there. You could hear him. You could hear him yeah, all the way. He was like, whoa, Dingo, all right, I hear you. Dude. Quiet down a little bit. He's like, is there an echo in here? I hear a buzzing. Is there an echo? <laughs> <laughs> There's a buzzing. 2000, 2002 Olympics, I got a pleather jacket on, I got a megaphone, and I got a blow-up doll around my head. And then we had, um, and then in 2006, we had the Patrick Swayze uh, yep. uh, 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 cardboard cutouts in, in Italy. <laughs> uh, uh, and by 2006, I no, it wasn't Swayze. I think it was Fabio. Oh, was I think it, it was Fabio. A Fabio uh, that's that's way better than yeah. Patrick Swayze. That's by yeah. 2002, they didn't want to let me in. By 2006, I was I was good to go. I was like, they let me they let me <laughs> in. So we, we we brought everything we possibly could in to stir them up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy, like that experience. Like I'll never forget 2002. Like at the bottom of Park City with the the the, the, the there was 30,000 people in the crowd. 30,000 people for a hot pipe competition. Is fucking nuts. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. That's insane. Yeah, it was insane. And the way, like, the sound would roll up it, too, was pretty crazy because it's, like, a natural amphitheater. But then it was just, like, a tunnel of noise where it was, like, whoa. That's crazy. And you guys didn't have any tracks out there yet. So, unfortunately, I played, like, some Bruce Springsteen and the Misfits. <laughs> to He's like, that's the only reason why I didn't play you guys. Yeah. Yeah, 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 seriously. This year, though, I'll be like, all right, this is the track you're going to have to play. Do you have to play your music over speakers or you just have Yeah, no, in? they play it. They'll, you get two songs to choose for two different runs, and then they'll play them as you're dropping in, oh, so it's gonna be like 45 sick. seconds. That's so rad. I chose Born in the USA in Salt Lake. Hell well, yeah. People were into it. <laughs> that's, that's people a good, were into that's it. That's a good pick. You guys just dropped 23. Yeah, yeah. 23. Last old March. How's that doing? Doing good, yeah, it's good. We, we always talk about it. It's hard kind of in our, our lane to like get really pumped about releasing a lot of music, because we like to like, it's for the shows, you know what I mean? And it's like, we always talk about because we have so much music we're sitting on when we're going to release it. And it's like we want to release it with like more of a purpose and being like, yo, here's new music and here's a small tour or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like um, just working out all that right now for sure. I did some uh, online research of uh, checking out your guys' uh, videos. Oh, Danny, Danny, it seems Danny, like Danny loves to do research. The, I love that. the music videos you guys have made are incredible. Oh, thanks. There man. is... Not just the music, but there are some of the hottest babes yeah. in these videos. Yeah, you're probably talking about the Sweet Dreams one, the ice cream truck. Yeah, that yeah. one. And then there's the one with the hot blonde one. Yep. Yep. And then there's one with like so many different babes in it. We're I mean, we're, you know. that's the thing like, is we don't, have, we don't have a lot of good ideas. It's like music video time. It's like hot girl, boom, next one. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all Dude. people want to see. They all have millions of views. Right? I would yeah. be like, I feel like it'd be <laughs> so crazy, fun to be like, right? hey, we got this song done. Let's talk about the music video yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, we just got that track. What do you think? Like, <laughs> I think you guys should do a full, um, you should do a music video in Asia. Yeah, I agree. That would be so That'd cool. Be so yeah. cool. Yeah. We, uh, like Kill Bill style. Yeah. We like kill sick. chicks killing each other or not killing, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a lot of blood squirting. That would be sick. Hell yeah. Yeah. We I don't know. To... Like we, we have fun with the, the, we, cause we took over the music video process. Where yeah. We were just sick of people like shooting them for us. And then like them just showing up. We're like, dude, we're just going to do like, we have, we have, we have like three videographers like on our, on like not retainer, but like in, in our squad. And we're just like, yo, like we'll just do it ourselves. We'll think of the ideas. We'll direct them. Like, 
and we'll just figure it out and we'll do them and it gives us more creative control over everything yeah how's the songwriting go for you guys good yeah yeah it's it's uh you know it's kind of like it's always different over over quarantine uh they've wanted to do like zoom writing sessions so if we're writing with like another singer or Which whatever sucks. like it's over zoom and it's it's just not you can't catch a vibe you know what i mean you need to be in the studio you're like and, walking like, on the computer like hello yeah it's, yeah because there's like a delay you can't play the so it's like they have to like download it and you download it and then you both mute and like think of ideas and it's like songwriting in a session it comes from people throwing out stupid shit like really like it's like 90 percent of our songs is either dave or me being like dude what if it was like da, 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 and then it's like no that's actually pretty sick we should do that and it's like you're like kidding halfway and it's actually kind of good and then somebody's like well what if it was like you this? get a and vibe yeah you just you're growing something out of nothing and it's it's impossible to do over like zoom so i mean we have so much music backed up now that we're good for the rest of this year probably half of next year on music yeah and now we're we had put out an album right before this before quarantine happened and we were going to go back to doing like a bus tour and like that kind of touring and like hard ticket venues and then we got hit with this so where we had all these shows booked for that style of show kind of stopped so now we have all these songs that are ready for that kind of show so as soon as the world is ready for that we'll probably put out like another album or another ep project which is like a bigger project than just singles yep that's cool you guys played a live show though in texas yeah yeah texas yeah, yeah we have we, we've done a few uh the texas was insane so in houston uh we did chicago we've done orlando tampa we, ha we have yeah tampa we have um <laughs> we've done florida. Key West, florida miami yeah. Yeah, yeah back to jacksonville yeah, san done, antonio <laughs> we've done texas and we've done florida um yeah, yeah no it's it, it was rad man it was it felt so good like when we played tampa that was the first show kind of back and it was like i like forgot what it felt like and we like went up there and the intro started rolling and i was just like oh you know it's funny about the tampa God. show we were talking about is tampa the same venue same place was the last show before we played before everything got canceled and it was our first, first show, back. show back not on purpose obviously we were yeah. just like this is like a weird kind of full circle like we're back at the yeah. same place it's just they refused to shut down and then they refused to stay shut down. so it was the first place we <laughs> we'll played. take it yeah. yeah we'll take it 100 yeah. it was it was so rad like as soon as the the lights turned off you know and the crowd like knew we were about to go on and they just went crazy it was like oh i forgot what that it's a feeling like. you forget about and you, do, you you don't like think or feel that you're missing it you know what i mean and then like when it when you're there and we were like oh my god like we're here again like holy shit you're like a whole surge of different energy it's just. crazy like I, I was just in florida and and for kel's live show and then the ufc live show it's just like to feel that energy again is that energy we've missed yeah you know society we're being told to sit stay away from me we'll do that and like you know, for me, it's like I realize that I get energy from other people. Of course. Yeah. Me being told to sit at home and, you know, not see anybody and go from my house to my office to my house to my office and see the same five people is like I'm lucky to have those five people. But fuck, like yeah. I want to hug people and I want to see people I don't mm -hmm. know and I want to see people excited. Like, what, did you guys have that same feeling? Like, just back, like people energy yeah. in your show, playing your music. People just people are ready to go. Dude, it just felt yeah. good to like go to a restaurant and like talk to people and like the waitress asking for something and then like we had some friends come out and just like being able to hang there and like talk and converse the like, dude like out here it's like it's been me and my wife like eating dinner every night and it's like that's great and I love her but I also love going out and talking to people and you know doing stuff like this having mm -hmm. conversations and that I think we all do that's kind of why we're all in like these spaces that we're in is it's fun to to do that and learn shit and and just have conversations that like electricity of a crowd like just that whole vibe like you know it literally like we were like got off we we're like oh my god I feel like a weight lifted off my shoulder. It went shoulders, by so yeah. fast, too. Like, it was an hour and a half show went by. And like, what happened? Yeah, what wow. happened? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Um, you guys are playing Mercury Lounge in New York City November 20th? Yeah. Yeah. That's locked in? Yeah, so we've rescheduled Moved three it. three times. Yeah. So we, we have, it's two shows, back-to-back um, -back shows there. Um, we've rescheduled it three times. And this date, I think, is still slightly up in the air. I don't, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's, it's scheduled for that time, but they're like, anything could happen. So we're hoping cause that's going to be kind of our good, like, um, where we throw in a lot of the old stuff mixed with a lot of our new stuff and kind of our more live show. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Well, uh, Danny takes, uh, this part very seriously. It's called, uh, Danny's lightning round. 
lightning right. questions. You just okay. pulled out the Ricky Lake card. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, we, we do. We're learning from Ellen and Oprah yeah. and all of them. We steal from everybody. We stole the can thing from James, and James if, Gordon. If you guys it. get enough of these questions right, you will. Uh, you get a backpack. You get a backpack. Yeah. A yeah, monster yeah, yeah. special I, backpack. Yeah. Hang on. Dingo will get those while I ask these. All right. Okay. So, um, what would be your dream artist collaboration be? Lil Wayne. Drake. The game? No. Uh, favorite <laughs> favorite city to travel? Tokyo. Tokyo, yeah. Favorite action sports to watch? Snowboarding. That's Snowboarding. Right. I'm just going to say that because you guys are here. Honestly, it's true, I think, though. <laughs> uh, Those are sick. Fondest yeah. Winter X Games memory? Uh, when Breathe Carolina performed at Winter X Games, it was uh, freezing cold, and I wasn't wearing a jacket, and I, my fingers were numb, but I, it was awesome. I'll go what, it wasn't when Danny won? That was 2001. That. <laughs> uh, what's the worst part about living in Colorado? Uh, the cold and the slippery roads. Best part about living in Colorado? Summers are beautiful. Powders in, in, incredible. And the, I chick, agree. and the chicks are great. Dude, there's so many hot babes in Colorado. I'm dating one. Sick. There you go. Yeah. So is he. I'm married, married to one. <laughs> I'm married to one. That's how much they are, how far they are. You know what I mean? Uh, best tattoo spotted at Warp Tour. Oh man, the guy that has the vans, the checkered vans, tattooed on his feet. Yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> he has van shoes. That's tatted. just a whole other level. I kind of want that. Yeah. Have you guys seen any of your uh, tattoo replicas? Any like? Yeah, a lot of kids have. Me and Dave have savages. Yeah, yeah a lot of them. A lot of kids right have here. Those. Yeah. That savage. That's sick. Yeah. There was a guy that oh. showed up that had Dave's exact hand tattoos, knuckle exact tats. knuckle tattoos, and he was like, "Dude, what a weird coincidence!" And I was like, "Yeah, dude, super weird coincidence, bro." <laughs> he man. has like his niece's name tattooed on his like. <laughs> that's what I was, I was like, saying. That's, like, that's a little weird, dude. Yeah. Aunt man fans the best. Uh, yeah. You man know, fans. Like, man yeah, fans are the man best. Man fans are the best. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like if you had to become a pop star, you'd have female fans, but you got man fans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we always had man fans. I don't think we ever had a female fan. <laughs> no, no, not really. No. <laughs> the one she got tattooed, Radical Babe. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> she got branded. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. What is your most treasured possession? Whew. Probably I would, my laptop because it's. Yeah, I would say my, I, 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 I was going to say hard drive or yeah. laptop. Okay. <laughs> you just a hard drive, but without the computer. Nah, the hard drive. That hard drive's gang. I have all my secret shit on the hard drive. Yeah, you know he what keeps I mean? that but what tight. If you, if you can only have one possession and you can't plug it in, I'll just get yeah. a new computer. Yeah, exactly. You can't. you can't. Oh, you gotta uh, go. To, he'll just go to the uh, what is the it? Library. The, the library. library. <laughs> yeah, you go to the library. I'm, I'm good at doing that. Library shit. He's like so jump drive. Yeah. Library boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you guys gonna do after this interview? Uh, work out. Yeah, take the work take out. the drive back. There's a gym right here. I know, but we're gonna go. Change. I'm wearing Converse and jeans. If you guys got the monster workout, workout guys, we gotta start mm -hmm. telling people to bring their gym bags. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we literally would have done have that. You, yeah. Has have you ever had a a bra or panties thrown on the stage? Yes. Yes. Sick. <laughs> What color? Danny were they? just like that was for me. Yeah, well, see, see, it was obviously thing, not on the card. The thing but. for us is, I, if that would happen, and I'm like, this is an all ages show. I'm not a fucking creep, so yeah, I don't know what's going say. on with that. I need to have someone else come in here and, like, get this out yeah. of my way. You know you're I mean? you're, you're going to have a job forever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm yeah. not a fucking creepo, so I'm yeah, like, you're like, don't touch that. Don't touch that. Yeah, that's an all-ages show, man. I don't know what's going on out there. Like, I don't want to yeah, If I try to grab it, Dave's just, you know, yeah. kicks, 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 kicks you away. Out. That was a strong kick, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, have you been training? <laughs> Since I was 14, man. Oh, you know I'm in karate. I know. I just I'm redoing my blue belt. No, I am. So I reached red belt in Taekwondo which is right before black. And Whoa. I decided during quarantine that once it's over, I will be going back. To, you to, have to. It's one away. I have to go get it. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to, to say you're you a gotta black beat belt. Shit out of Dave. Yeah. Just, We're going to film. It's going to be huge. Just to put in my Instagram bio, yeah. black belt. Like you have to do. Then you can deflect all of the I'm bras I'm just saying if I ever get panties. divorced, imagine the Tinder pictures with me just holding it. Just fucking. Do you, oh. do you have to redo no, no, the I think it's belt? more about like, even like when you have kids, it's like you need to be a dad with a black belt. That's what I say. Tall too. It's like, Tall's one away from black. I, I was like, let's go back, dude. We'll have those cool pictures of us with the legs. But like, it, up here. here's you the thing: is, not, like, you gotta keep stretching. Though. I stretch. You think every you can I still think Tall do the probably, leg thing. Tall probably jumped a couple belts. He like he like. Yeah, he might have talked the guy into it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, I'll get you some tribal gear. He knew the guy. The <laughs> he knew the guy. No, what was it? Vestal watches. Yeah. I'll get you some Vestal watches. I'll get you watches. a Vestal watch <laughs> if you could just give me the red belt, dude. <laughs> yeah. Skip the orange. What was it? No, before Vistal was freestyle, dude. 
freestyle watches back in the day. Oh yeah, the shark fin. Those were hot. I know the those guy. That, cool. I know the guy that started that. Yeah, what's uh, uh Jerry Jacobs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I use his house to surf out the front of it. There you go. His name is Cindy Crawford. Damn, that's sick. yeah. Nice. Pretty cool. Whoa. You think every morning, he's like, what's up, Cindy? <laughs> you want a cigarette? <laughs> you need a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> They got the sick surf spot because it's in a gated place. It's uh, it's North Malibu, so nobody can walk in. So there's once you're in the house. What is it? Paradise Code. Paradise. Yeah, no, you're no, really no, gonna no, drop the address, huh? Just, just like where Cindy Crawford no, lives. Six, nine, uh, Paradise, Paradise, Paradise Cove. Cove's the best because they call it a private beach, but anyone could just go there. They're it's like not, it's a private beach. It's like it's I've been there millions. It's not a private <laughs> beach. It's north of there. It's north of there. It's and like you a, may see Cindy Crawford. That's. Yeah. I mean, I'd pay sixty-five bucks to hang out with Crawford. <laughs> Oh yeah, Seacroft, baby. Yeah, Let's, C. Get Croft, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. I think she has a daughter too. Who's beautiful. She's Whoa. probably at all your shows. Just saying. <laughs> just <laughs> Mindy saying. Crawford. Ooh. Cindy and Mindy, man. Cindy Line them up. Man, well, uh, we uh, we appreciate you guys coming in. We appreciate you guys at Monster Energy because on the music front, you guys are the uh, leaders of the content creators at Monster Thank Energy. You. We'll say that. Hey, man. Danny, we give them their trophy, please. Yeah, here's your trophy. <laughs> we this do is, get the trophy. Uh, so we do get the trophy. This is the no, listener's oh, man. choice award. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Who do you want to thank, dude? You know, man, first and foremost, I just want to thank my family. I want to thank my cat. I want to thank Coops. Thank you. I want to thank Monster. I just want to thank the world, man. You yeah. know what I mean? I want to thank the fans. Live and, on. Um, cool. Danny, we got to get that back off them. Yeah, yeah. we got to get The real one comes in the mix. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Yeah, this, yeah, we have to engrave it and stuff. <laughs> you know, the real one's gold, so we don't yeah. want to. We gotta wait to get the gold one in. But we really appreciate it, guys. So, we love uh, you guys, man. Thank stay you. Stay up and get back on the road and keep making people smile. Thank you. Does this backpack hold a skateboard? Is it it like does a, everything, uh, man. Yeah, hold and it looks laptop. waterproof too. Hold oh. your laptop in oh, yeah. here. Oh. In there, it's waterproof. Dude, when we travel, we're so monstered hey, Dave, out. It's insane. You can insane. put your hard drive in there. Oh, oh. I, n I need a hard drive space. And then you Good. can like. If you need to swim somewhere, you can like lock this thing up, put it on your back, and you can swim there. Oh, it becomes what? like a floating device. Oh, wow. Do you not, remember, probably not with your laptop. Do you guys remember when the track, skateboard but... backpacks, like Shorty's backpacks, came out? With you would, the speakers? You or... just walk around with a backpack or the skateboard in your backpack. Mm -hmm. You weren't riding it. You were just at school, <laughs> like, sup, dude? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Danny's like, I totally remember that. Yeah. No, I remember the, the G, was it the G bag? It oh, was the, the Osiris. Osiris the Osiris yeah, bag. Yeah. And it was like, Without anything in it, it weighed like 15, 20 yeah. pounds already because it was like trip, like D I batteries. The, I had the DVS backpack that turned into a chair. I just thought that was so uh. sick. It was not cool at all. <laughs> That's cool now. If you still got it, I'd yeah. buy that from yeah. you. I, I coach. I sit around a lot. <laughs> there you go. I love that. Uh, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Keep rocking. The, That's a wrap. We'll try. And invite me to your next video shoot, please. <laughs> Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy.